people have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect. Hello viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a program that talks about breeding of terrorism and its impact on South Asian nations. Let's begin with the headlines first. Deadly car bomb explodes outside Hafiz Saeed's house. Exiled dissidents hold protest outside FATF headquarters to move Pakistan from grey list to blacklist. And Pakistan-based terror outfits using drones to smuggle arms and drugs into India. Pakistan, the country that has for decades sustained as a hub of terrorism, is now paying for its own deeds as its Lahore city came at the target of terrorists this week. The city got jolted with a major bomb blast that occurred at a police picket outside the Lahore residence of Hafiz Saeed, co-founder of terrorist group lashkar e taiba and the chief of jamaat ud dawa report. A bomb attack in a residential area of Pakistan's eastern city of Lahore killed four people, including a child, and wounded at least 21 on June 23. The intensity of the blast was such that the glass windows of nearby houses and buildings were shattered. This time, the target of terrorists was the terror mastermind, the main perpetrator behind the 2008 Mumbai attacks, Hafiz Saeed. The explosion occurred just 100 meters away from Saeed's house in Johar town area of Lahore. हम यहाँ मैं ड्यूटी करता हूँ यहाँ पे केकेटी में तो जब ड्यूटी पे हैं अभी मैं अंदर गया हूँ तो एकदम से आवाज आई जोर की पूरी बिल्डिंग हिल गई है तो हमने क्या पता नहीं क्या हुआ अचानक बाहर निकले देखा तो पता चला जी ब्लास्ट हो गया यहाँ पे तो एकदम से इतना खौफ तारी हो गया यहाँ पे सारी दुनिया it was a car bomb explosion. They say that it was an attempt to undermine the law enforcement agencies of Pakistan. However, the reality seems a bit different. The UN-designated terrorist Saeed was under house arrest for over a year after an anti-terrorism court sentenced him to 11 years in jail for financing terrorist operations. Intelligence reports suggest that despite being sentenced to jail term, Pakistan quietly shifted Hafiz to his house in Lahore from Court Lakhpat Jail, where he continues to manage Lashkar e Taiba. All streets leading to his house were put under tight security by placing huge concrete slabs, blocking all public access to the road and private guards, along with police personnel, patrolling around his house at all times. Yet Pakistani officials are playing the victim, but the people of Pakistan are angry as a terrorist gets state-sponsored protection in a lavish bungalow, they all are left to die. The timing of the blast that occurred right before the FATF's decision of Pakistan's grey status has left many questioning. Did Pakistan kill its own to avoid the blacklist and other sanctions? Pakistan has been on the FATF's grey list since June 2018 and find itself isolated internationally on the issue of terrorism. At its last plenary meeting in February 2021, FATF retained Pakistan in its grey list and urged the country to complete an action plan to counter terror financing before June 2021. Hafiz Seed lives in a highly secure area of Lahore with several tiers of security thrown in. Even a field rat will find it difficult to make an intrusion. Under the circumstances right before the FATF decision, 
This attack appears to have been orchestrated by ISA itself to gain sympathy of FATF and perhaps get a waiver from its sanctions and other ways. Pakistan is a rogue state like North Korea and China with zero conscious and could go to any extent to achieve its end result. They realize that Hafez Saeed has become an embarrassment and a liability for Pakistan and they would do anything to get rid of him. As the phrase goes, as you sow, so shall you reap. Pakistan today remains a hotbed of this plague called terrorism with no end in sight. However, it continues to harbor terror leaders residing in its territory. It was revealed once again when Talha Saeed, son of Hafiz Saeed and a designated terrorist by the US Treasury Department, was seen arriving at a hospital in Pakistan hours after the powerful bomb explosion took place outside his father's house. According to reports, Talha met a JUD worker at the hospital who was reportedly injured in the blast. After almost two decades of spending of over $2 trillion and sacrifices of hundreds of thousands of civilians and military personnel, where do you think Afghanistan is headed today? Well, no prizes for guessing. Back to square one. As US forces and its other allies start drawing down their presence, the insurgent Taliban are on a territory recapturing spree. And you know who is supporting them? The one who wants this to happen dearly, or say desperately, the perpetual defaulter of Pakistan. From donation drives to diplomatic theft, Islamabad is providing it all to keep Taliban's violent campaign running. And here in our show, for some, we have evidence available. And the rest has come from the horse's mouth himself. A 51-minute interview of the Pakistan Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi to an Afghan news channel this week has laid bare the nefarious designs of Islamabad vis-a-vis -vis Afghanistan. The agenda is clear and they are working overtime to accomplish it, undermine the democratically elected government, downplay Taliban's violent campaigns and propose a deal where Islamabad could have a greater say in Afghanistan's domestic policies. And this came across when Qureshi was trying to be a large-hearted statesman preaching peace to the world. Not only did he defend the Taliban attacks brazenly, but also issued a veiled threat to the Kabul establishment to either fall in line and give in to Taliban demands or face consequences. Yes, but the violence is very high and they're taking Who's responsible for that? Who's responsible for that? You think, now, again, Again, if you try and uh, create this impression that the violence is high because of Taliban, okay, let, please, complete, let, please, me, please. let me just finish. The violence is high because of Taliban, again, that would be an exaggeration. Yes, it is sir. for you to decide. I can't tell you what to do. But you, if both sides, listen, if the Taliban stick to their position, right, uh, and the... Uh, uh, the, the element, uh, uh, President Ashraf Ghani and his core team, you know, stick to their position. Will there be peace in Afghanistan? You tell me. Will there be peace? There'll be no peace. Don't you want peace? In this nearly an hour-long interview, not once did Qureshi concede that Taliban were terrorists. In fact, he almost called them freedom fighters. Since the US-led forces toppled Taliban government in 2001, the Taliban are responsible for tens of thousands of killings and a protected war in the country that might see an even deadlier second reign once the troops leave. While Kabul has maintained that Pakistan provides men and material support to the Taliban, Islamabad's position on Taliban has exposed it all. Let's come back to the question of Taliban and, and put a step back. Who are the Taliban? Madrasa students, an insurgency, a terrorist group? How would you define them? The Afghans uh, who have... Uh, who, who have guns and kill people. Well, killing has taken place from both sides, unfortunately. Who are the Taliban? You have a definition. The Afghans. Yes. Depends, uh, you know, uh, who's looking at things, how. You know, at times uh, people are dubbed as terrorists. Uh, at times, uh, people are seen and viewed, and they proclaim to be uh, uh, an element uh, fighting foreign occupation. 
you know, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, wanting freedom of their land. So, depends how you look at it. Experts say Pakistan already has a massive plan drawn out for post-US withdrawal from Afghanistan. And they only fear for its nowhere close to peace or harmony. As per a report by Voice of America quoting locals, the donations to the Afghan Taliban are on upswing in Pakistan border regions as the militant group intensifies attacks against Afghan forces. Multiple sources and eyewitnesses on the ground with knowledge of these donations have confirmed to that fundraising for the Taliban has continued in various parts of Pakistan. So it's particularly curious that the report in question refers to this as Taliban fundraising when in fact we all know what it is, is extortion. Uh, what the Taliban does is they go ask for money, but you're not exactly being asked, right? It's extortion. If you don't pay, everybody knows what happens to you. I've toured in Afghanistan. I know how these things are done. So, you know, this coming out, say, from Voice of America just tells you the extent to which they're going to sort of present this soft, cuddly image of the Taliban prior to their withdrawal. Today, Pakistan stands at a juncture where it itself is not certain of its future. The FATF sword is perennially hanging over its head. If not for China and Turkey, Pakistan would have been declared a terror state by now. And amidst an economic crisis that can anytime get worsened by the pandemic, observers say that Pakistan must focus on its own backyard before entering the bigger political games, for neither it has money to play nor might to sustain. Several exiled dissidents held demonstration outside the headquarters of Financial Action Task Force in Paris to persuade the anti-terror financing organization to place Pakistan on the blacklist. Pakistan has always been unsafe for political activists and journalists. There has been rampant tries in the cases of target killings and torture by state and non-state actors in the country that has forced the Pakistan activists to take refuge in other parts of the world. While Pakistan's fate at the Financial Action Task Force was under scanner this week, scores of exiled journalists and human rights activists belonging to Baloch, Pashtun, Uyghur and Tibetan communities gathered outside the headquarters of FATF in Paris. They urged the International Monitoring Body to blacklist Pakistan for Islamabad's failure to curb terror financing and money laundering. Disgruntled activists accused Pakistan of war crimes and violating the human rights of its own people and said that Pakistan is still involved in terror training and terror financing through different means and routes. Islamabad has been using its established and active money laundering and drug trafficking networks in Africa and Europe to fund terror groups and money gathered through these networks is an important source of income for terror activities in South Asia. In Pakistan, uh, terror financing continues. We know that uh, the terror networks in Balochistan continue to operate. Uh, the money laundering op uh, operations continue. We know that Pakistan is using its, its uh, you know, different routes uh, by sending money to Africa and through that uh, it's using its, these uh, routes to, uh, to uh, fund terror activities back in South Asia, back in Afghanistan and Kashmir. So uh, even though on paper Pakistan is saying that it is doing a lot, uh, on actual on ground we are still getting reports that uh, money laundering, terror financing, all of these uh, activities continue to happen in Pakistan. The people in Balochistan are demanding sovereignty for a long time and in response to this legitimate demand, the agencies in Pakistan are eliminating separatists through their kill and dump policy, enforced disappearances, tortures and killings. That's how Pakistan tries to crush dissent in Balochistan. Thousands in the region have been displaced because of armed conflicts and army operations. The Pakistan army has systematically carried out atrocities on the people targeting intellectuals, especially journalists, students and political activists. Pakistan is a dangerous country. It 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 is a d
اس کے علاوہ پشتون کمیونٹی کو مار رہے ہیں اس کے علاوہ جو وہاں پہ صحافت ہے صحافت کو بھی مارا جا رہا ہے جو آزادی ہے جو بولنے کی آزادی نہیں ہے اس کو دبایا جا رہا ہے ہم ایف اے ٹی ایف سے گزارش کرتے ہیں کہ پاکستان کو بلیک لسٹ میں شامل کیا جائے Surviving the savagery and barbarism unleashed by the state-backed forces isn't the only major task for the people of Balochistan though. They stare at a bleak future looking on helplessly as the Chinese take control of their mineral-rich land under the pretext of China-Pakistan economic corridor fortifying and fencing areas like the port city of Gwadar. China, a close strategic partner of Pakistan, has been defending and often covering up for Pakistan's links to terror groups, it has stood by Pakistan in the UNSC and other multilateral forums on this issue. Beijing is not only violating human rights in its occupied territory, but has collaborated with neighboring Pakistan to exploit natural resources in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir, Gilgit-Baltistan and Balochistan. To make its multi-billion dollar China-Pakistan economic corridor as successful, both Islamabad and Beijing are allegedly responsible for crimes against humanity and mass genocide. Although guns have fallen silent on the LOC after the renewed pact on the ceasefire between India and Pakistan, nefarious activities of Islamabad have not stopped yet in Jammu and Kashmir. The terror breeding nation has devised multi pronged strategies to hurt India's sovereignty and integrity. These strategies include consistent infiltration through drones and sending in arms and trucks in Kashmir to instigate violence in the region. However, Indian security forces, despite suffering losses, have been successful in busting all the devious anti India plots hashed in the corridors of Islamabad and Rawalpindi. Over 100 days at the line of control have passed without a bullet being fired between Indian and Pakistani forces. But there is no commitment from Islamabad to stop sponsoring terror. The rock state of Pakistan is resorting to its old tactics of disrupting peace and developments in Jammu and Kashmir by infiltration of arms and ammunition using drones into the Indian territory. A flurry of intelligence inputs continues to pour in about terrorist activities in terror hideouts close to the LOC in areas under control of the Pakistan Army. Reiterating this fact, Indian Chief of Defence Staff General Bipin Rawat recently said that ceasefire doesn't mean that there is ceasefire just along the border, but Pakistan at the same time creates trouble in the hinterland. Well, the ceasefire so far along the line of control is holding, which is a very positive sign. But at the same time, we are also witnessing uh, infiltration of weapons and ammunition using drones, which does not augur well for peace, because all these weapons and ammunition and drugs that are being sent into our country through drones are obviously meant to disrupt the internal peace process. And if the internal peace process is disrupted, then really we cannot say that the ceasefire is holding. Because ceasefire does not mean that you ceasefire along the, uh, along the borders, but you at the same time create trouble in the hinterland. We would like semblance of peace in the entire state of JNK. To keep its terror machine running, Pakistan has been using narcotics as a major financing tool. Several drug smuggling attempts have been foiled in the recent days. The Indian Border Security Force recovered a consignment of 27 kg of heroin worth 135 crore rupees after a narcotic smuggler was shot dead along the international border. Earlier, Indian security forces busted another narco terror module in Baramulla area of Kashmir and arrested 10 people with a huge quantity of heroin worth 45 crore rupees along with arms and ammunition. These recoveries have clearly shown that the cross-border narco-terror threat has become a major area of concern in Kashmir. Due to the huge influx of these deadly drugs from Pakistan, thousands of people, mostly youth from Kashmir, are also sleeping into the dark alleys of drug addiction. 
कुल मिला अभी तक जो हैं हमने दस लोग जो हैं इसमें अभी तक पकड़े हैं और इनसे हमने जो अपडेटेड इन्फॉर्मेशन हमारे पास आ रही है तकरीबन सात आठ किलो जो है हेरोइन वो पकड़ा है इसके अलावा दस ग्रेनेड्स मिले हैं चार पिस्टल्स मिले हैं उनके चार मैगजीन मिले हैं उनके पास कुछ एमिनेशन भी था पिस्टल्स का और यहाँ पे जो है इन्होंने एक नार्को जो नार्कोटिक्स का ट्रेड करने से इनको एक शायद जो है डिफरेंट तंजीमों को फंडिंग करनी थी और इसके अलावा जो है कुछ वारदात ऐसी करनी थी ग्रेनेड्स और पिस्टल्स को लेके जिससे और अफरा तफरी जो है वो फैल पाए Frustrated by its failures at fomenting trouble in India, Pakistan is using all tricks in its book to unleash violence in the country. But vigilant Indian security forces have been successfully thwarting all its mischievous agendas. Recently, three Lashkar-e-Taiba terrorists, including a top commander Mudassir Pandit, who was involved in the killing of three policemen and two councillors and two civilians, were neutralised in an encounter. According to the security forces two foreign terrorists have also been killed in two encounters in Kashmir support including a terrorist identified as Abdullah Asrar a resident of Pakistan This clearly states the presence of Pakistani terrorists in the valley who are currently lying low The operation ko monitor karte rahe bahut neat and clean saaf sutra operation hua jisme teen बहुत ही खूंखार टेरिस कमांडर मारे गए और ये तीनों के तीनों अपने आप में कमांडर थे क्योंकि बड़े लंबे अरसे से बहुत तरह के टेरर क्राइम को ये अंजाम दे रहे थे Indian security forces have successfully managed to burst various strategies of terror in Kashmir. However, despite the best efforts of the security forces, some challenges still remain. At a time of increased vigil on the border, Pakistan-backed terror groups have been adopting and adapting terror tactics from other theaters like drones to drop weapons, tunnels to infiltrate terrorists, and introducing IEDs in Kashmir. This puts a question mark on Pakistan's intent as to whether it genuinely seeks peace at border. or it is hatching a bigger conspiracy and peace gestures were merely a tactical move and with that we come to the end of this edition of newsweek south asia we will be back next week with more news views and analysis from the subcontinent meanwhile do keep writing to us at nwsa@nin.com this is shreya savaje signing off on the behalf of entire production team of newsweek south asia goodbye and take care subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button